Well, it's the 1st of January today, and I hope this is not any kind of signs of things to come. It's actually um, just after 12 o'clock, um, and as you can see, the sky is absolutely black. You can't see very much at all. It's really blustery. It's not that cold, but it's uh, with the wind, it's, it's, it's reasonably chilly. And as you can see, the old weather vane is doing its thing. Hello, welcome to another episode of Jim's Love and Garden. Now, over the next um, couple of months, the, it's at this time of year that I always buy all the stuff that I need for the garden for the next year because it's the cheapest uh, you can buy it at the moment. So uh, it's always kind of now that I buy it. And in a week or so's time, it's actually my 21st birthday. I know you all thought I was 18, but uh, my wife's treated me to a new wheelbarrow and I have been shopping around looking at different ones. So I just wanted to do a quick product review on the wheelbarrow that I've bought and explain to you why I've bought it and the pros and cons etc. So if you're thinking of buying a wheelbarrow yourself you'll know um, you know the sort of what I've been through to uh, to find the one that I've got. So here's a quick product review on a wheelbarrow I've just bought. So here's the wheelbarrow and what I wanted was um, the wheelbarrow I've got is uh, 80 litres and this one's 120 litres so as you can see the uh, the book is quite large on it. Um, I actually purchased this from, uh, or my wife purchased it, so to say, from from B and Q, um, and it was a, at a cost of forty six pound. Now, if you look on the internet, you can pay up to two hundred pound for a wheelbarrow of this size. Um, the one thing I would say is uh, it's a it's a galvanised um, um, bucket on it, so it's a good. Um, you know, it's a good quality bucket with respect to the fact that it's galvanised, so it's you know it's not going to rust, and um, you know start to um, you know sort of go bad on you. But the one things that I um, would say, obviously, you know, you do get what you pay for at the end of the day, and uh, there are a, a couple of things which are um, not a hundred percent with this one. To be honest with you, if you can see um, the edges there where they've not been painted in there. Um, and it's the same up here as well, um, where it's um, going slightly rusty. That's to me really isn't isn't a big deal because I can very quickly take off the uh, the bucket and I can just paint this frame, uh, which is only going to take 10, 15 minutes or so um, with some paint. So what I will do um, before I uh, uh, use it in earnest, or what I might do actually is wait till the weather gets a bit warmer. But I will give it a coat of paint, the framework a coat of paint. As I say, the um, the actual bucket on it is galvanised steel. The steel is not too bad, but it um, it is. I would say it's most certainly on the thinner side of of thick, if you like. Um, so this is this is an ideal wheelbarrow for a gardener. So if you're going to be putting um, compost dirt and sand or, or anything like that into a wheelbarrow to move it about um, this is most certainly an ideal wheelbarrow and and considering the price of it um, you know it, it really is a must buy however if you're um, going to be um, shifting heavier stuff than that like brick ends or rubble or, or anything like that um, even though I'm sure this is more than capable of doing it um, my last wheelbarrow which obviously I've still got um, is a much thicker steel on the on the bucket, so I can I can quite happily throw brick ends into it and lumps of um, concrete and whatever else, and not worry about it too much. I would have a concern about throwing bricks into this because I think you may well dent um, this this uh, this this metalwork. Because I think the um, the steel that's used on the bucket on this one is not quite as thick as it is on the uh, the other one, and where they've where they've Swage the edges round on the top here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little bit uneven round 
round the edge and I the shop that I went to, the being queue that I went to to buy this, there was actually two of these left. And this was the better one of the two. And I think I think it's just where they've been stacking them up to be honest with you, where it's got um, slightly dented. So that, that kind of tells me that um, if I um, throw stuff in it it's going to get dented. However, having said that, um, you know, it's got a good it's got a good solid frame on it. The um, the actual frame itself, this this sort of green part here, is is made of good quality thick steel. It's a, it's a good sort of three mil thick, thick walled um, pipe work. It's got a um, a plastic wheel on it, which is, which I believe is better. Um, it's got an inflated um, tire on, and it's all held together really well. There were some comments I saw on the internet to say that the nuts and bolts on them did tend to come loose. So um, what I may well do is obviously at the moment these are just standard nuts on here. Um, they're M6 standard um, nuts. What I may well do is when I take the bucket off to um, to paint the frame um, later um, or sort of early next year, um, I think what I may well do is replace the nuts with um, nylock nuts, which is a nut with like a, um, a nylon um, sort of um, washer inside it so as you tighten it on it, it, it tends to lock onto the thread and won't come undone again so I think I'll probably replace the nuts with those when uh, when I do it but uh, overall I'm really I'm really pleased with the uh, the wheelbarrow it's it's not a an overly heavy one it's easy to use even though it's you know it's a big wheelbarrow it's very maneuverable and it's not heavy to use so you know to be ideal for anybody of any size or strength really to use and um, and obviously you can put as much or as little in the uh, in the bucket as you like. But uh, I um, I feel it's a sturdy design. However, as I say, you know you get what you pay for. Um, there are wheelbarrows just like this that I've seen on the internet for two hundred pound, and this is a quarter of the price. So um, I'm really happy with that. Now in the allotment or or um, general gardening, there aren't that many tools that you absolutely um, require. There are many tools out on the market um, for doing various jobs, and um, but really to do the, the you know the sort of the main bulk of gardening, really there are only sort of three or four tools that you need. Obviously, you need a fork and you need a spade, um, you know, for digging the ground, etc. The next sort of most important um, tool, I believe, is a rake. Now this rake that I've got here. Um, I've, I inherited this um, about 20 years ago. I honestly don't know how old it is. I've broken it a couple of times and re-welded it on. Um, so this is, this is a bit of a woodman's axe to be honest with you because it's had a number of handles and it is due for a new handle now to be honest with you because this handle that's on it um, has most certainly seen better days. But um, earlier, earlier this year, which is 2014, um, a, um, one of my neighbour allotment um, owners had a, um, a rake which I don't believe you can actually buy in the shops I may be wrong you might be able to buy these in the shops but um, he's actually got a rake that he was given and the rake is actually uh, about two and a half foot wide now if you're if you're raking large amounts of ground and trying to get it all level if you're using a rake that's kind of that big this is probably just over just over a foot, that's probably about 14, 13, 14 inches wide. Um, if you've got a rake which is much bigger, um, you can. It's much easier to get the ground level, and um, you know when you're, you know when you're raking the ground in and out. Um, if you've got a wider rake, it's most certainly easier to break up the um, the ground and uh, get it all level than uh, than if you're, uh, you know, you know, trying to do it with a smaller rake. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to make. Um, a rake of that size. Um, I know um, I know you're not all welders, but uh, I'm just um, I'm, I'm just trying to show you if you do uh, know anybody with um, welding skills, or, or if you've got welding skills yourself, making a rake isn't that difficult to make. Um, so in the next um, few clips, I'm going to show you how to make a garden rake. <laughs> So that's how you make a 31 inch um, rake. Would you like to see it again? Okay, so basically um, a rake is just a effectively a strip of metal, which is which is this part here, with a series of um, 
teeth cone along. They don't necessarily need to be shaped round like that because basically the actual the actual action of you using this on the ground will be, um, you know, it, you know, to drag the saw towards you anyway. So it doesn't necessarily have to be sort of cut shaped like that. And then there's basically just a steel um, steel part here for the um, for the the handle or the shaft to be um, um, fastened into. So basically, the idea that I've had is um, if you look at this. Um, this stuff, which is a, um, some mezzanine floor or a section of mezzanine floor and offcut. Um, if you look at the the sort of the pieces in here, you've all you, you've almost got a rake ready made already. So um, what I'm intending to do is to use this um, basically to um, to form the uh, the teeth of the um, um, you know the actual rake, and they'll be um, basically using this along with um, two other pieces which I'm going to cut from this to weld onto there and then I can um, form the um, the actual rake shape that I need and then uh, just, just cut off the top as an angle um, and then I can basically form most of the rake without doing a lot of work so um, the first thing I'm going to do is to make the um, make the top part of the rake. And what, what I'm going to do is make it from these two pieces here. So all I'm going to do is get the angle grinder now and basically cut all these sort of middle bits out and um, so I can, I can get these two strips here which are the bits that I need to make the, uh, the, the the top part of the rake which is effectively this part here. Okay so as I explained I wanted to make the uh, the rake 30 inches wide or sort of two and a half foot. So this um, these bits of metal that I cut off weren't quite wide enough, so I've just welded another one on um, onto there. You can, it's more obvious on the other side where I've welded it. And what I've done is I've taken all the um, this this metal's galvanised, and obviously I can't weld onto zinc. So um, I've, I've um, with the angle grinder I've linished off all of the um, the zinc off this side, so I can start to weld the. Um, the, the you know the sort of the teeth in for the uh, for the rake. So basically, now I've got that. That this is actually longer than it needs to be. But what I'll do is I'll leave it long, and then I can sort of chop it off after when I've decided how long it's actually going to be. Because I'm not quite sure if 30 inches is going to be ideal for the um, the stuff that I've got. So this is the this is the frame. So this now is going to fit sort of onto onto there like that. Now there's a, there's a bit of straightening to be done. What I'm going to do is start at one end. As I say, this is this the the bottom bit. Um, so I'm trying to do this 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 bit here. This is um, this is too long. Obviously, this bit's too long as well. So what I'm going to do is weld each of these on, going along. Um, all right. So if you can imagine, I'm going to start to form the the right part. Now I'm going to cut all of this off around here anyway, so all of this will be gone. So I'll just end up with this bottom bit and then a row of teeth if you like, which are about an inch and a half apart. Okay, so now what I've done is I've cut off the top of each one. As you can see I've also taken the galvanising down each side all the way along. It's actually worked out to be 31 inches long. So that bit is going to go on there, sort of like that. As you can see it's slightly, slightly too long there and there. So what I'll do is I'll I'll go along and weld all of these on, making sure it's all straight. Weld them on obviously from underneath along this ledge here and along this edge here, all the way along each one, and then I'll cut the end off there and there, and then just and then just but weld the um, the two ends together so it makes the complete um, right part. Now because I've retained this, um, because I've retained this sort of strengthening bit in here I won't need to put any other because um, I was originally going to put a piece of this going down the back as well but I think this will be more than strong enough as it is with this piece on and I don't want to I don't want to put too much metal in it because obviously you don't want a rake that's going to be really heavy you want it to be reasonably light and this is going to be heavy enough as it is I think so um, I think that'll be more than sufficient if I just weld it along the top and leave that in for the uh, um, you know the strengthening and then I'll be cutting each one off around here going down after I've welded it all together. Okay so now I've welded um, down the side here as I said and down that side as well there's a bit of, bit of rough stuff that I need to 
angle, angle, um, angle grind off just to get the rough edges out. But all of these are now welded, welded into this top piece. So now what I need to do is cut down, and I'm going to make the um, the rake reasonably deep. So I'm going to I'm going to cut it level with this um, sort of strengthening bit here. So I'm going to be cutting all of these off along that line there. Okay, so here we are at the moment. So I've um, sanded all of the corners so there's no rough edges um, all the way down. I have noticed that the bit that I welded earlier on there is actually split, so I need to run a bead of weld along there again. Um, now I've cut all of the cut all the edges of the show the profile of what you'll be able to see. So they've all been cut. Um, there's still a bit of a a sh shard on there, but the, uh, they've all been cut to kind of that shape. I've just knocked the corners off, um, as you can see, all the way along. Now, the one thing I have noticed since I've cut it off is it, it has very slightly warped. I don't know if that's going to be a problem or not. But what I'm tempted to do now, the weight of it, it's not too heavy to be honest with you. I'd say it's probably it's probably going on for about probably about a kilo at the moment. I don't want it to get much heavier than that. So, uh, but that's how it'll look when it's on the ground. So basically, the next step is to, in the in the centre here, to form a uh, metal hoop so the um, so the shaft can go into here, and then I'll be making like a reinforcing thing to go at the back of it to hold it on, and then the, obviously the 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 handle of the um, rake will come up here, and I'm going to make like a, an A-frame bit here. So it um, so it supports it as it drags it along the uh, the ground. So I'll show you that next. Okay, so this is the stuff I'm going to use. Now this is made of hickory, and and I would advise that you, um, if you are going to put a staff onto a any tool really, hickory is most certainly the wood to uh, to go for. It's a it's a good, strong, and also light wood. And if you find um, if you look at most tools, they've got hickory handles on them, which is exactly, which is exactly why I'm using a hickory pole. Now, basically, what I need to do is to trap the um, the end of the pole on the on the actual um, rake blade, if you like. So, unfortunately, I've not got a piece of pipe which is big enough, and so basically, the options I've got is to either bend a piece of steel like that into a into a pipe shape or it's actually easier if I've, this is a piece of rolled pipe um, which is obviously far too big so what I'm going to do is cut a section out of this and then roll that round and form the um, the pipe that will be just the right um, size to go over the pole. Cut a piece of um, off the pipe which is going to make as, as soon as that's bent round that's going to be the right size for um, to go over the pole. Now, to show you a quick trick of how to actually uh, work out how big it needs to be, draw a draw a quick mark on the. Um, so it's, it's not easy to do this one-handed. Um, draw a mark on the the pole, and then roll the pole round your your piece of metal like that. Also, when you've got two hands, it's a lot easier to do. And then when that mark comes back round, yeah. That's how wide your piece of steel needs to be, and then I've just used that as a template to measure how big that needed to be. So I now know if I roll that into a circle, it's going to perfectly fit around that pole. Okay, so that's what you end up with. Um, if I'm being absolutely honest with you, there's actually two seams if you can see. Um, it was slightly narrower. The, the track I showed you rolling a piece of steel around. Um, that tells you the inside diameter, not the outside diameter, so I'll slightly out. So what I've done is I've just welded a slither of metal in there. But as you can see, that will fit over um, the the end of the pole. And obviously, as soon as you drive that in with a hammer, it'll it'll stay in there. Now, I'm actually I'm going to cut this into two pieces now, because I need one piece about that big, an inch or so, to be around here on the pole. And then there's going to be, that's going to make like an A-frame back to the... Um, the rake end if you like so basically I'm going to cut about that much off there now and then I'm going to drill a hole in there and a hole in there so you can put a screw through into the um, the wooden post or the pole wherever and then I'm going to be welding that to the um, to the rake <laughs> Ok, 
Okay, so we're very nearly there now. So basically what I've done is uh, I've just cleaned that up there. I'm going to weld that again, which is that's the bit where I welded before and it didn't quite take. And what I've done is I've created a sort of triangular, let me show you from this side, a triangular um, with the top rounded off a piece of uh, metal. It's about about three millimeters thick, so it's you know it's it's quite sturdy. But this is where all the force is going to get, go from the handle into the into the actual rake part itself. So I've just tacked that on. Um, I've just put a little tack there and there with the welder, and I've also this is the bit that's going to hold the handle, and I've just tacked that once there, so I can still kind of move it about and tap it to make sure that it's square. Because obviously what I need to do is make sure that that is at perfect right angles to the um, to the rake. Now the handle will fit in fit in there as you can see if I can back up a bit that'll be the that'll be the the rake when it's completed. Now this this part here which is the bit that you saw me making earlier on that's going to sit around here on the on the actual shaft and what I'm going to be doing is from here out to probably around here I'm going to just going to be welding some little strips of um, well I think I'm going to actually use I've got some very thin um, sort of about sort of about eight mil uh, pipe which I'm going to go from here to here and so basically that'll stop the handle from going backwards and forwards like that when I'm uh, when I'm raking but the but the most important thing to do now is to make sure that the handle is is square to the um, to the blade which it looks about right I may need to just to bend it over a little bit or whatever just to get it right. The way I'm going to make sure that it's absolutely square is I'm just going to run a piece of string from here and here, the two, uh, the two sort of extremities of the, the blade. And then obviously if I've got a piece of string that's tied there and tied there, if I know the middle point and I pull that piece of string over to here, the middle point should be actually on the handle. If it's not, I need to move the handle backwards and forwards like that until, it's, until the middle of the string is on, on the handle. Then I know that distance there is the same as that distance so therefore it's square and then what I'll be doing is welding under there round there all the way around here along there along there and then exactly the same on the front I'll weld along um, that edge there just to make sure it's all perfectly welded together I've already taken off the galvanized um, um, plate off there so I can weld straight onto the metal and then I'll also weld it underneath underneath that edge there to make sure it's absolutely perfectly uh, strong etc and then as soon as I've done that all I need to do is basically the handle at the end I've got uh, the, the ends actually square at the minute so I need to round that off because obviously that'll be the bit that you, your hand goes on so I need to smooth that off um, and what I will be doing eventually is actually uh, just putting a quick coat of um, varnish on the on the handle just to give it a little bit more protection whilst it's outside Okay, so there's pretty much the finished product. As you can see, I've welded round all of here, also on the other side, all the way along there. And I've put a really good strong one all the way around there, along there, and underneath, along there. And then I've just welded um, these little pieces of pipe. Um, the reason I've used pipe, because obviously it's a bit lighter, but it's also got the strength. It's welded on there, so that's perfectly in the middle. I've... Um, put the screws through onto the shaft so now the shaft is um, nice and sturdy in the in the uh, the rake and I've also um, rounded off the edge so when you're using it with your hand there's no sort of sharp edge on there so I've just sanded that off and what I will do now is just give the I've had to wet it because uh, when I was welding these bits here um, I didn't want the uh, the wood to become damaged so a trick if you ever weld in onto a piece of metal which is next to a piece of wood keep the wood wet then it won't obviously burn or or, or, or you know or sort of whatever so that now I've ground all the uh, the rough bits off and it's all nice and smooth and I'm just going to work the hands on it the only thing left to do really is to test it out on the garden ok it's a bit blustery today but uh, I'll just give it a quick try and yet yeah, it seems to be working quite nicely this is just the soil that I got out of the green this other day and as you can see, it's making short work of that. Okay, top tip of the day. If you get your um, pumpkins and dry them out for a few months, it makes the outer shell quite hard. 
and then if you give them to your chickens and they empty it all out you can make quite a nice little bowl out of it or what I like to think of is quite a fetching crash helmet so I hope this uh, episode has been of some use to you um, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea making a rake but uh, I know this this most certainly will help me out with a lot of the uh, the work on the allotment because when you've got a nice wide rake like this you can very quickly go over the ground and get it all nice and level and when you're leveling off quite large areas um, you know you can be you can be raking it for sort of half an hour trying to get it straight but something like this will most certainly um, will most certainly make it a lot easier the one thing if I would have uh, done anything different what I would have done if I'd have got one is made the staff a little bit longer um, the weight of it's quite nice actually it's it, you know it's uh, I was worried that it was going to be slightly too heavy because of the materials that I've been using, but uh, it does go through the ground quite well. Um, you know, it, it, it's not heavy to use, but it's it, it's got enough weight behind it to, you know, you know, to pull the ground towards you. Uh, but I think if it had got a longer staff on it, if it had got another, I don't know, perhaps two foot on it, it, it would be a lot um, easier to use because you could throw it a bit further to, you know, sort of bring the ground towards you. So what I might do if I uh, if I see another staff a bit longer, what I might do is swap the staff for a longer one. One thing I will do, most of this is stainless steel anyway, but uh, what, uh, what I will do um, when the weather gets a bit more uh, close, because it's, it, it's not ideal to paint when it's like this, but uh, what I will do is, is paint it up uh, with a bit of, um, you know, sort of, well, I'll, I'll prime it and paint it with some um, stuff to, uh, you know, just to protect it and make it uh, last a bit longer. But anyway, I hope this episode has been of some use to you. Please do drop your comments um, below. Please subscribe. And thank you for watching another episode of Jim's Lot of Garden.